So as we talk to people and say, I'm going to preach to the book of Revelation, you get different responses. Um, I won't belabor this point too much, but a lot of people do book of Revelation to draw a crowd. Um, then if, but there's all those who worry, if you preach the book of Revelation, you're going to drive people away. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of the book of Revelation. I remember the tradition I grew up in was a dispensational church, if you know what that is, and um, scared to death about all the stuff in Revelation. I remember as a child reading some of this and, and even speaking to my mother who was afraid of these things. And I was just kind of, I was trying to comfort her even. I was like, we're not supposed to be afraid of this stuff. This, we must be looking at this wrong because we're not supposed to be afraid of these things. We, you fear the Lord. I don't think I articulate it quite as great as that, but that was what my thinking was. But a lot of people are afraid of Revelation. And, um, and one of the reasons is you, get a, you have a book of symbols and you, and you take a symbol and you can interpret a symbol however you want to. And there's a, you know, some people who write songs, um, they'll write a song today and, they'll say, and you'll say, what do you mean by that? And they'll say, oh, it doesn't matter what I mean, it's what it means to the person listening to it. And to me, I'm like, I care less what it means to me. I want to know what it meant to you when you wrote it. I want to know what you meant when you said that. And, uh, but as an artist, they're just like, they want other people to interpret. And you know, whatever, if that's the way they want to do it, that's fine. But that's not the way the God of Word, the God of Word, the Word of God works. There, what does he mean is what we want to know. He has symbols. You can come up with you know, a beast. What's the beast? It could be anything. And if you read much about um, people who interpret Revelation, they go crazy on this stuff. And they want to make everything they see in the newspaper fit. Uh, Ronald Wilson Reagan. I remember that. How many letters are in there in the word Ronald? Six. How about Wilson? Six. And the, word, and the name Reagan? Six. <gasps> yeah, barcodes. <gasps> the Beatles, the band, with their electric guitars and their tails that come out like scorpions that they plug into the amplifiers. That's that's that in the Book of Revelation. It's like, come on. And then my favorite book title is, I think it's the right numbers, 88 Reasons the World We're In in 1988. It's like, well, you got that one wrong. Maybe we need to go back to zero reasons the world will end in the year 2000. That might be a, a better one. So you got to be able to interpret it somehow. And we could say, well, I just want the Holy Spirit to descend upon me and give me extra revelation so that I can explain to everybody out there what it means. I don't want that. I don't want a God to use the Bible like that because then I'm like, who do I depend on? How do I know that you truly do have the Holy Spirit and you're interpreting it right? And, I don't, and that's another way God gives us these things. God does open the eyes and hearts and ears and minds to the, his word that a believer can see himself in the gospel in Jesus Christ and is opened up in a way that brings us more faith and more hope and more understanding and, and makes us more like Christ. And so there is a key to how do you do this? And the key is let the Bible interpret the Bible. And we're, that's why a couple of times we're going to go to the Old Testament if not for nothing else but to show you that this comes from the Bible and not just he's making up something and you got to figure out what it means. But there are a lot of people, and the big question is, what about the tribulation? Is the church going to go through the tribulation? That's a huge question. So you got pre-trib, rapture, post-trib, rapture, mid-trib, rapture, you know, all these things. Rapture being the church is going to be taken out, and then there's going to be tribulation, to which I say, Why? The church is gone. It's not good for the rest of the world. It's gone. That's this it. That's the end. That's what the Bible says. There's, there's no rapture as such where the world will continue and God's going to deal with people differently and people are going to get saved in a slightly different way. This is the gospel. Will the church go through the great tribulation? Will the church go through tribulation? Yes. Absolutely. And the question that I think we have has to be, well, I would say that things probably, looking at the Bible toward the end, it will get increasingly worse. It just makes sense that it would. There are some people believe that the world is going to increasingly get better. 
and the whole world will end up being Christian before you know it, and that's that thousand-year reign of Christ. I, I don't see it in Scripture. I see the wheat and the tares being growing up together, and he doesn't want to pull up the, the weeds yet, the tares yet, because they're still, it'll pull up the, the wheat too. So we're growing up, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of man, side by side. We're supposed to be light in the world. We're supposed to be um, bringing a harvest of righteousness out and all these things so that we continue in this life through trials and tribulation. Anybody going through any trial or tribulation? Anybody? <laughs> and if you're not, you know, you're lying to yourself, at least look inner circle you're going to find it. it it is the condition of a fallen and cursed world this is where we are we're in the great tribulation and part of the problem can be that if we only see the tribulation as some final thing that happens because we know that the believer is protected we know that we're protected from spiritual harm by God. And if we see these things, especially in Revelation, but in the rest of the Bible, that's there about protecting us through the tribulation, then what is it now? What about the troubles I'm having in my personal life? What about these significant things that are causing really difficult times in my life right now? What you got for that? I mean, maybe we'll go through the great tribulation. I don't know. Ain't nobody got time to think about that. Okay, when we get there, we get there. I pray, thank God, we don't have to go through a great tribulation. Okay, good. <laughs> but a lot of people I know, tribulation is pretty great right now. And there's other parts in the world, and we've talked about this before, where it is more horrific than we could possibly imagine what it's like to be a believer. And so tell them we're not going through tribulation. What is God telling us about how we can deal with our current tribulations. And this is what the book of Revelation is about. How do we deal, how should we see the current tribulations that we go through, whether they get a little bit better in our future or a whole lot worse in our future, what's going on? And how is the church supposed to, to look at it? 